everyone and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hello. And awesome brony reviewer Silver Quill. Hmm, I'm sorry. I'm just enjoying a late uh, meal. It's called Doran, the dumbest <laughs> character on the moon. <laughs> Does he taste like fluffy clouds? Pink, free unicorn, dancing on ring. <laughs> It tastes like disappointment and stupidity. <laughs> so, Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Less caffeine than a cu- cu- cup of coffee. Mm. <sighs> As you can imagine, we are going to be reviewing the fourth issue of the Finchipis Magic series, starring Nightmare Moon, but eh, not entirely. <laughs> Written by... Uh, oh, hang on a minute, I completely lost my wiki page. Hang on a second. Oh, here we go. Written by Heather Neufer, with art by Tony Flakes, and colors by Heather Breckel. So, this issue follows what happened after Luna, after transforming into Nightmare Moon, got banished to the moon by the elements of Harmony. And we're going to take it from there, because to be perfectly honest, this is going to be one of those, oh my god, this is so difficult to talk about comic books. So, guys, we're going to go to the classical uh, inverted alphabetical order here. What did you think of this issue? Uh, this is rough because right off the bat, this comic starts with something I'm not really a fan of. I was not a big fan of the idea of the nightmare forces from the nightmare rarity arc. This is the power of the written word. Nightmare moon was sealed in the moon, not on the moon. It is one letter's difference, but it carries tremendously different meanings. So to suddenly say that she's stuck on the moon, wandering the surface, already is going against the show, in my eyes. And you're losing me. Then you say, oh, there's this race living on the moon. Okay, you're losing me further. They make the dreams for Equestria. So Celestia dumped Nightmare Moon in the place where she can do the most damage? I'm sorry. I'm checked out. (laughs) And here's this character named Doran. I will eat her. <laughs> With all oh, wow. beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs> Didn't know you got into that kind of thing, Silver. Wow. So, but you I, know, now that you, now that you put it that, like that, yeah, why the hell is Celestia sending Luna, Nightmare Moon? To where she can do the more damage. Oh my god, I didn't think about that, and now I'm thinking about it, and I hate you for it. God <laughs> damn it. Well, I will say that on the positive side, we get to see a confrontation between Nightmare Moon and Celestia that is a lot more involving. Things get better at the end of the comic, but I'm sorry to get there. You lost me. Yeah, it's like, the damage is already done. It's like when people say, oh, I love a candlelight wedding. I say, you love part two, right? The second part <laughs> is the best part. But the first part turns me awful. off. It's awful. And I, it, tur- it turned me away, and I can't enjoy the second part because the, you had to watch the first part to get there. <laughs> oh my god, I cannot, f- I cannot believe it. I found my alma mater. You are like me. I thought I was alone in the fandom when describing the problem with Canterlot Wedding, but you just nailed it, sir. Thank well, you. A, thank you. And it's, it's the same thing here. It's part two. Go look at part two because part two is actually okay. Part one. <laughs> no, thank you. But there's no parts to this. It's just the first half and the second half. Okay, that's technically a part. But <laughs> I think I've just spoiled the whole my whole con- contribution to the review here. But well, okay. n- you don't have to worry about it because there is really no, n- not much else that we can get out of this comic now, can we? Well, there's the idea of crafting dreams, but then uh, that raises all sorts of questions, especially in light of the more recent uh, Luna and the CMC episodes. Not to mention that some have phrased, oh, this is where Luna learned her dreamwalking ability. Nope. No. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if she walked the dreams way back in the day. No. 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 I don't don't think so. But, yeah, I mean, that will be... That will be the, ma- the major issue that I, too, have with the comic. Um, sorry, I'm trampling over my- Norman. Norman, what do you think of it? No, no, no. Okay, okay, there you- okay, all right, all right. Silver, uh, can you please put him on a straight jacket and just cuddle him for a, li- a little while? He needs some... Uh... Uh, oh, I, I, could just t- I could start singing for him again, but that no. just makes it more insane. So, no, here's the thing, here's the thing. 
way back when, I think about almost a year ago, when we reviewed the Nightmare Rarity arc about how the moon people, blah, 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 they have moons. So that one I could accept because possibility of a living creature on the moon is there. Yes, I can believe it for this universe. And Nightmare Moon taking over those creatures and making them their slave? Yes, I could believe it. Knowing that they rule or they control dreams? Nope, 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 just no. That is, um, I, I actually kind of like the Nightmare Rarity arc. Uh, if only because I love to see my favorite character suffer and there is nothing better than seeing Rarity being trapped in that uh in the the body of that monster for so many uh so many comics uh only for her to be released but i am of the silver quill school of thinking the whole idea of the nightmare thing being a parasite that turns you into an evil person is as stupid as the idea of eradicating the evil out of someone just to put it into yourself reflections arc anybody mm-hmm. and this uh comic reinforces the idea of the mental parasite being there because the, the, the denizens of the moon are there. So it's kind of like a setup for the nightmare rarity arc more than a story of what happened after nightmare moon got banished. I, which it has, it has so many different ways and so much potential to be a really good story. It could be about princess Celestia coping with the loss of her sister. It could be Luna being trapped inside that entity for a thousand years being unable to get out of there. It could be anything. And I, this story could work. This actually, this one could work if they handled it better. And they didn't. Honestly, I think why I nope so hard for this one is because my expectations were a bit too high. I didn't have any expectations for this one because when it comes to villains, and I am going to throw myself all of the fandom in this, but I will say right away, when it comes to villains, Nightmare Moon is the most boring. In my opinion, I think they don't do nearly enough with her as they could, and they just completely waste her. And when it comes to bad guys, she's actually the most inefficient one, because she suffers the whole, oh, the hero has a monologue immunity, meaning that they can talk about, uh, they can talk about how they are going to defeat the bad guy while the bad guy is there and doesn't do anything. Well, my expectation for this was when I first heard of it is this. I wanted to see the encroaching or the, the, the very seed of Nightmare Moon's presence growth in Luna. So remember in the Reflections arc when Celestia or Sarsoul said that Luna has been a bit distant and they didn't talk much together or something like that. I want to see from Luna's point of view, when that thing, that parasite talking to Luna, like slowly infecting her, slowly making her go to the dark side and overthrown her sister eventually. So I, I want to see that whole process, that whole backstory of how it started and how, well, obviously the end where, well, we won't see the obvious end where she got zapped to the moon, but no, I just want to see how it started and when it when Nightmare Moon was revealed, done, full stop there, I would be happy. Like, oh my god, this is so amazing. Blah, blah, blah. But no, instead we got... Ah! James, what got, do you think? We got a mm-hmm. Russian saying yes. Da! Da! <laughs> da. When Norman gets out, he speaks da. in Russian. Uh, multicultural. Yes. yes. New head canon. Um, I thought you would speak in German. <laughs> Uh, what do I think? I'm not sure if you guys want to want to know what I think of this of this comic. Is that um, okay? The previous comic was bad. It was awful. It was it was terrible. Mm-hmm. But that's mm-hmm. that's where it le- what that's where it's left. And it's bad. Okay, this one is wasted potential. Oh and yes. There is nothing that hurts me more than seeing a comic go completely wasted. Because you have so many different ideas and so many cool ways that you can go around them, and this one is like it goes through the motion in almost every single department. Even the art style is uninspired. And I love Tony Flix's artwork, but there is this one moment where I was like, dude, there is copy-paste, and then there is what you are doing here. 
in page 14, when for some reason the ponies are telling to each other that Celestia has turned evil, each one of those poses is just a recolor and a rehearing of the previous pose. <laughs> well, yes, look at that. Well, that's what the cartoon do. <laughs> yeah, no, okay, but I mean... Okay. Go on, go on. Well, yeah, the recycled poses, I can understand that sometimes you've got to... Uh, You've got to cut on, cut on time where need, where you can. But I see what you're saying. Yeah. Also, it's really confusing because this whole thing, it doesn't sound like it actually is happening in a dream or something. Like, is this happening in a dream? Is this happening in reality? What, this old town's on fire with Nightmare Moon banners and the sky is red with blood? And suddenly Celestia just uses her power to make it all disappear? Is she using mind controlling powers or is she calming the nightmares of the of her subjects? Or is this actually happening in reality? It is never put clear. <laughs> Celestia's benefit rule is through mind control. Yeah, so it's like here we go again with the magic eraser, fixing everything that goes wrong without actually having any conflict whatsoever. And what you say is true, it's not getting interesting until Nightmare Moon says, Well, this isn't working, put myself into the mind of my former sister. And this is where the comic actually kind of shines. That one moment where Celestia is forced to watch what has happened to her sister. That, that dark nightmare inside the dungeon. That was a, that was a good part. And that's what kills me. There are moments like this goddamn page in the entire comic. And they do nothing with them. Full of ideas that never get expanded. That's the problem with this comic. Doesn't get the, doesn't get any out of, anything out of it. Give it to the... You know what? I hate to say this. I'm going to say it. If you give this to the fans, they will have enough work to do for... for we will not even miss the, the, the absence of the actual TV show. Well, we will be hip deep into amazing fa- fanfic after amazing, amazing fanfic. Yeah. That's what filmfic is for. So, but shall we tackle this page by page as much as we d- dare? Do we want I'm not, to? I'm not entirely sure, actually, because we are, we just said the problems. We, I mean, if there is anything that you may want to bring up, just go ahead. But personally, I am, I am a bit, I'm a bit disappointed with the whole thing. I mean, yeah, back to back of disappointment is not really healthy for me. Okay, but I, I do no, but, want to just point out a few little things here, there, every please. which way. Please, please, right. go ahead, man. All yours. So, for, first page is hearkening back to the start of Friendship is Magic, the great legend, even with. So pretty impressive visuals uh, with the Dream Team. And then Nightmare Moon lands on the moon, and, and she's just like, well, this sucks. Okay. You just got pwned smacked to the moon, and you're like, me. Silver, Silver, okay. I, I, I need to bring up something here. Nightmare Moon has just landed on the moon by her, the elements of harmony, I'm assuming. And now we see her clearly there. Do you see any chains about binding her? No, she's she's strutting free. So what's stopping her from just flying back to Equestria? Well, there's a there's a TSA station on the way to the Earth, and man, they they do not treat you gently. Oh, mm. not only that, but the fact that they misinterpret the, the 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 legend that is written there in the first episode of the show, trapped like you said in the moon, in inside. It's a prison. They, um, if you remember the way that the elements of harmony work, they either turn things into shadow, into stone, or makes them explode. <laughs> no, seriously, that's how they work. Or brings them back to their original shape and then banishes them, banishes them to, um, uh, imprisons them in the in the place that they banish them to. But if we were to understand this, the elements of harmony turn uh, Nightmare Moon into an entity. That then was absorbed by the, by the by the moon itself, which is why the craters appeared on the surface in the shape of a horse's head with a horn. That's the legend. Sometimes think... that's how it happened inside the moon, not on it. Mm-hmm. Although to be fair, the fans themselves have often misinterpreted that. We've often said on on the moon, not in the moon. It's been a pet peeve of mine, but when it starts to influence how... the official <laughs> comics. So I'm like, oh, come on, guys. Yeah. It's fu- it's fine when the fans misinterpret it because, I mean, come on, we are not the ones that have to take care of the IP. 
But these are the guys writing for it. I mean, come on, come on. Although now... No, is that, are we asking too much? A bit of consistency, you know, grammar, grammar, wording, but the way that it's James, like, okay, they, they done goof in Nightmare Rarity, now they're stuck with what they have. So for them to acknowledge the creatures on the moon, I, I give them credit, where's credits due, because they call back to a past thing that has been, mentioned before, and bring it here. Like what Silver always does in his show, consistency, yay. Yeah, but that doesn't say, it doesn't mean that you need to have consistency from one series to another. I mean, they don't bring the denizens of the moon when they are talking about uh, when Luna was banished on the on the reflection arc. They never bring it up. Perhaps they didn't bring it up because they realized that the idea is stupid. <laughs> oh, don't be that hard on them. I am hard on them. I don't think this is a very good idea, guys. Grief and anger, which is something that every single human being experiences one at, at one point in their lives, cannot be simplified as mental parasite. In that case, every single person that I've known of is full of mental parasites. <laughs> Ooh, trippy. Well, uh, just to just to raise a question uh, to what you, you said, James. If Nightmare Moon being imprisoned in the moon, her shadows form the craters on the to form her face on the on the moon's face. What do you think is happening on the dark side of the moon? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a massive giant crack. <laughs> I, just, I just think there'd be a lot of young stallions looking up and saying, "Why does the moon make me all funny?" <laughs> uh, no, but <laughs> no, no, no sock for you. Oh dear. <laughs> so okay, so Nightmare Moon, she's she's slightly vexed that she's been banished and defeated, and for at least the first two panels, she's like, "Well, I'm stranded alone on the moon." I would imagine her to be roaring in impotent fury, but no, there's a castle. Hey, and in it, I I only just noticed on the reread, there's Larry and uh, I forget the other guy's name from. The Nightmare Rarity arc, Shadow Fright and his bumbling, uh, his bumbling partner. Yeah. So there they are. There's a little continuity for you. But I'm just not really that interested. And none of them notices this giant black mare who is basically trespassing. And these are the Knicks. Which makes it sound like a baseball, a basketball team. But, uh, <laughs> And I know that name is taken from, uh, I believe it's Greek mythology, the, the goddess of dreams. But it's also one of the more popular OCs in the Brony fandom. Mm-hmm. Past sins. Yeah. And I just like, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I ask myself, is this a shout out to the fans or is it just happy coincidence? Happy coincidence. I say happy coincidence. I okay. hate when the fan, I hate when the fandom just goes and says, oh, look at that. Pinkie Pie is a gypsy. Like in Friendship is Witchcraft. Ah, ah, make a reference to fun content. And I'm like, oh god, you guys are so... So no, I don't think that Nix is a reference to past scenes. I doubt it. Okay, well then, the, that's all we need. They, I mean, we see some ponies that could be, uh, could be a rarity descendant, as the head Nix guy is talking about how they craft dreams. Now here's the second question that comes up. I said Celestia put Nightmare Moon in the worst possible spot. At first, when I'm first reading this, Nightmare Moon doesn't know who these guys are. I'm assuming that means Luna didn't know, which I'm assuming Celestia didn't know. But then, as Celestia seems not only aware, but in communication with the Knicks, even though they've been corrupted, I'm suddenly doubtful. I'm saying, wait, did Celestia know about these guys up there? Did she not tell her sister, which, hey, trust issues, and that she said... Nightmare Moon there anyway, like in walking distance. <laughs> Good gravy, Celestia. Your aim. Work on your aim. Oh boy. One more thing that bugs me about this one now is Celestia is talking to the guard. Wouldn't it be more appropriate if she was talking to Star Swirl? Maybe they didn't want Why? back to back Star Swirl. Because in this timeline, Star Swirl still exists and. 
Star Soul is what uh, Celestia's advisor, something like that. So wouldn't it be more appropriate? Uh, I'm not sure. I it would. It definitely would. You'd have a royal magician advisor, but perhaps the events of reflections were going on at the same time. Who knows? Yeah. To be Can honest, you try to find a continuity within the comics of the of the MLP universe. You will be better off trying to find a connection between all the Legend of Zelda video games. Oh, there's already there. There's someone already mapped it out. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah I know. That's, that's terrifying in my eyes. I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure it's the same people that try to make heads of tails of the plot of every single Christopher Nolan movie. <laughs> no, the, the Zelda one is official by Nintendo. Oh, pfft. That's what I have to say about it. There you go. Uh, and then finally we get to the character I've been denouncing this entire review. Doran. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, darn. At first, she's just this, she's getting chewed out by her boss because she apparently misbehaves. And okay, we're meant, to, I think the intention was that we were supposed to see Doran as this innocent character that Nightmare Moon takes advantage of. But as the plot goes along, first she's just sort of inept and overeager and with a strange hair fixation. Mm-hmm. Which which ties into the Nightmare Moon toy. Do you want to braid my hair? <laughs> mm-hmm. My uh, star braids are so fancy. <laughs> but then, Nightmare Moon starts spreading nightmares every which way. <clears throat> Tries to hurt everyone. And Doran is just talking about shampoo reviews. Mm-hmm. And so on and so forth. This is not innocence. Innocence is still awareness of your surroundings, but you're not yet experiencing uh, the darker side. You're not maybe not aware of it. Maybe you're a little too trusting. This isn't naivete where you just haven't experienced it yet, but you'll learn as soon as you see it. This is obliviousness. Doran is in a whole other world and is not seeing anything of what's happening in front of her, and it makes me dislike this character passionately. Because everything that's happening is her fault. Uh, yep. Yep. And then and then we do reach that scene where you mentioned the, the realm is burning, ponies are fearful, and Celestia... Oh, it's like, oh, Nightmare Moon, you're so annoying. Boop. Trickle, trickle. <laughs> I'm sorry, but of all the sound effects you could pick for this, trickle, trickle. Uh... Somebody was watching too much Batman, the original 1960s show, with the sound effects in that in that moment. And then uh, just jumping ahead to the Nightmare Moon Celestia fight, which is just this is what we wanted to see. Yep. This is this is something else. But Celestia looks like she's attacking her with Frosted Lucky Charms. <laughs> They're magically delicious. And looks like Nightmare Moon is attacking Celestia with Count Chocula and. Frankenberries. And creepy crawlers. Mm, yeah. And the and the two Thunder Imps who just keep making appearances like they were these really great characters we all loved. <laughs> I, think, I think that Tony Flix is obsessed with those characters because they appear in every single one of the comics that he draws. I never said... Do you guys remember my reaction to the Rainbow Dash uh, mini? It was a universal meh. meh. It united meh. the world in meh. True. My last observation is that the, it is the scene where Luna's in the du- mental dungeon and Celestia starts to break down. That yeah. that up until now, she's been talking about this like everything's par for the course. You just banished your sister. Are you not broken up? Oh, mm-hmm. she is. Okay, good. Thank goodness. Uh, I, I'll i do my best to free you as soon as I can. In a thousand years. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Reception is... <laughs> I can hear you. And then, and then somehow we're we're hinted that Doran was helping her because she ha- now has a braided mane and tail. Yeah, like how that happened? It was a dream. Oh my god, what the hell? And, and Doran, uh, thanks, Doran. You doomed your entire race. This yep. was all your fault. You're not innocent. You're not lovable. You are a flippin' moron. Yep. I'm sorry if I sound terribly unsympathetic to what's meant to be a cutesy character, but cute does not make you stupid. No, no, it is true. Cute doesn't and make vice- you, no, cute doesn't make you stupid. Look at Twilight. <laughs> I mean, Twilight outside of the 
the good, the bad, and the ponies issue that we're not going into. But no, Torek is a smart character, and she's adorable. And and vice versa. Being stupid doesn't make you instantly adorable. Yeah. So, huh. uh, I th- I think I pretty much... I apologize, but I think I went almost solo review on this one. No problem, no, man, because... No, that's perfectly fine, because you know what? Uh, you know what? I feel for this comic like we felt for the Rainbow Dash one. Like... It it sucks because the art style is so cool. I yeah. love Tony Flix's artwork. I uh, love the way that the characters are drawn. Um, I love the colors. The colors are so nice and vibrant, and they are so they they are very bright and colorful, but they can also be very dark and oppressive. And I love the way that the nightmares are drawn because they are not just black. It's all shaded in very cold hues of purple and blue, and they are so nice. But the story and 50 is just shades so... are gray. <laughs> oh God, no, no, no! Is that... I mean, the art style great. The story is not even nearly as close as uh, at the level of the art style. It's, 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 it really, it really is disappointing. This is very badly written. I'm sorry, but it's not. It's not good writing. Sorry, Heather Newfer, but you disappoint me on this one. Well, the art. For this one, it's not bad. I do like how Nightmare Moon looks because, well, besides Andy Price's artwork on, well, Nightmare Moon or Luna, Tony Fleece's art here is not bad too. Like, I highly enjoy Luna here, or at least Nightmare Moon and how she looks. And the one positive side I can say about this book is we get to see a lot of Nightmare Moon. Although, Nightmare Moon, I agree that as villains go, she was the least intriguing, partly because she was meant to be a fallen character. We were waiting for redemption, and it came. But I've, I'm still not a big fan of zapping someone good. Mm-hmm. I just, when you reduce morality to an on-off switch, it, I find it borderline offensive. When you uh, when you summarize personality, feelings, the nurture versus nature uh, um, concept and all that, and you sum it up as in... Sabi sabi sab gun pew 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 oh you're good now yeah but I think I think we pretty much said all that could be said there weren't even a lot of background references to make it fun no not yeah. much at least in the siren we got to see Doctor Hoof and Rose uh yes we didn't talk about that but <laughs> mostly because it was so it was one appearance great hey this story is still disappointing <laughs> it still I'm- sucks. I'm I'm afraid the 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 middle of the Fiendship is Magic series really stole a lot of energy. Yeah, I'm not even uh, so weak. It was it was all divided between King Sombra and Queen Chrysalis. To be perfectly honest, Mm -hmm. every every every, every, yeah, we're going to be getting to that one. Uh, But so final thoughts, or or were those the final thoughts? Yes. Uh, yes. so, uh, okay, I'm going to say yes, but with slightly less passion. <laughs> Final thoughts is that it's over. Um, I will just say this. Uh, worse than a comic that is bad, because something, well, comic, a movie, anything that is bad, is something that is disappointing. And something that you can see all the potential is, and how it gets wasted. That has happened with video games, that has happened with movies, and that has happened with comics. And this is no exception. Mm-hmm. Great ideas completely wasted. Gone to the toilet. I'm sorry, but this is not how you do a story like this. For 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 the next time that you tackle Nightmare Moon, please try to make it in a more engaging manner. And not leaving someone feeling so cold about it. Mm, true, true. Uh, but next week is going to be next... awesome, right? Yeah, yeah, because holy cow, oh my god, I can't believe it. Somebody has come back from the ex- from exile, actually, because we're gonna have Finship is Magic issue number five, focused on Queen Chrysalis, written by Katie Cook and drawn by Andy Price with colors by Heather Breckel. And why am I saying that somebody is finally back from exile? Well, you will find out in the next review. Thank you guys so much for listening to us, and I hope that you, uh, if you don't agree with our opinion, let us know in the comments. Uh, we hope that you had fun, and we'll see you all next time. This has been James Cork. And I am Norman Sanzo. And I'm picking bits of feather out of my teeth. <laughs> uh, that's not from pruning yourself, right? 
Uh, nope, this is something entirely different. Uh, I didn't know that gray farms had teeth. I ate their dentures. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay, have to take note on that. Hope you guys have a good one, and we'll see you all next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Adios. I am going to develop a post traumatic stress disorder based on that goddamn horn. <laughs> uh, but you like it in the previous one. Uh, <laughs> I just give it the people what they want. Deep down. And they want.